Okay, to continue from our previous video, we are going to calibrate some images that are in the Bridgewater State University Observatory's database from uh, September 2015. September 27th, we have images of the Ring Nebula and Messier 92. So we're going to calibrate those. Uh, Last time, we had calibrated flats from the previous date, September 26th, because we didn't have any usable flats from the 27th. So here are some of those. They're blue. In Maxim DL6, I want to set up calibration groups that include those flats, but separately. Each filter should be separate. So process, set calibration. Go down here. I'm going to add a new flat group. And I'm going to drag all these calibrated blue flats from September 26th in. I'm going to name this something that I can recognize it as. So 2015-09-26 flat oops, B cal. I always do the date this way so that it's in order if you sort it by name. And we already have our flats in there. One second, negative 10.3 temperature. All right. Now I'm going to do the clear ones. So these are the calibrated clear flats. I'm going to add a new flat group in Maxim DL. Select all those clear calibrated flats, drag them in. There they are. Rename the group. 2015-09-26 flat C cal. And you can see those are longer. Those are 1.5 seconds, and the temperature is the same, negative 10.3. It's OK for flats to be significantly different both from each other and from the images that they'll be used to calibrate. Flats are applied as multiplication, not subtraction. So it's the ratio of the brightnesses of pixels that's important, not the total value of each individual number. That's why it doesn't matter what the exposure time is. The only way in which it does make a difference, um, if the flats are too brief, which I think I remember from this date, these might be a little bit on the short side, uh, you can see the pattern of the camera shutter. Because it's like you know, the shutter was partially closed for a significant portion of the time that the image was being taken, so you can see the pattern. We'll see. These might have that in it, or they may not. Um, we are going to do the next color, red, calibrated, flats. I'm going to add a new group, drag in all of those red flats, rename it, 2015-09-26 flat R cal. And I just noticed the 2 is not on this, so I'll fix that. If you're a bit OCD like I am, that might have been bothering you this whole time. Um, OK. V, Cal, and V again. That's green, not violet. Uh, we'll drag those into a new calibration group in Max and DL. And again, just rename it. 2015-09-26. Flat uh, V cal. All right, there they are. Uh, all of the times are over one second, which is good. Usually, if if they're under one second, the flats are no good at all. You'll see that shutter pattern for sure. I'm gonna uncheck this dark 1.3 seconds because I'm pretty sure that our data images are going to have a longer exposure time than that, and dark exposure times must match. Well, ideally, they should match the exposure time used for the data. And I'm going to click OK to save my calibration groups. Now let's take a look at the actual images that we're going to calibrate using those flats. So we're in the Ring Nebula here on September 27th. And it's important for the flats that you're going to use to calibrate an image to be from a nearby date, preferably as close in time as possible to when your pictures were actually taken because they do include patterns of dust and that stuff can move around. Um, so if it moves, you're stuck. Let's see. Let's see what these are. There's no indication of the exposure time. Let's drag one in. Here's my FITS header window. And just to remind you, you can turn that on or off by hitting Control-F. 
control F again. I can also close it here. Uh, I think view hit uh, fits header window. Yeah, that also opens it up. Okay, so I have an exposure time here of 10 seconds. Ooh, that might be tricky. We don't usually take darks that are 10 seconds long. Hopefully I have some. Um, set temperature is negative 10.3, so that's good. That matches the flat temperature. Let's just see if uh, the ones later in the list are the same time. They are. I'll open up a few more. I'm just watching the numbers here, making sure there's nothing different about them. 10, 10, 10. Okay. All right. I will close those. And let's see if I go back to process and set calibration. I've already set a lot of uh, calibration files, but I'm not sure if I have any darks that are 10 seconds long and at a temperature of negative 10.3. Huh, it turns out that I do, and they're actually from that date. So I'm going to check that. Duration 10 seconds, temperature negative 10.3 and they were from that date. And just you know, to give you an idea, they, they must just be in this folder. Yep, 10 seconds. So I would have just dragged this in to here with a new dark group to do that. So since the exposure time of the darks exactly matches the exposure time of the data images, which is 10 seconds, the dark frame scaling is none. We don't want to multiply the darks by any sort of scale factor. And uh, let's just pick the clear. We'll start with the clear since I opened those first and those are 10 seconds long. So I uncheck all the flats that are in colors other than clear. And then I'm just going to make sure that there's nothing else checked on this list. These are the darks that I want to use. I don't want to accidentally use anything else, like, like a bias from a temperature that's wrong or any other dark files. Uh, nothing there. Okay, oh, let's just check. Yes, everything under the advanced button is checked. Click OK. So the way that I usually do this, just because I like to see the outcome, is I'll select the images and I'll just drag them all in. Um, 50, yeah, I know that my machine can easily handle that. So I'm going to select all of these, clear, 10 second long ring nebula exposures, drag them into Maxim DL. And I like to watch this window while they open up to see if there is anything weird that happens with any of the numbers here. Like if there are any files that are different from the others. Everything looked the same, basically. Okay, cool. I'm going to close this. And now because I already set up my calibration here, I just go process, calibrate all. It'll take a second. Ah, see what happened? This is what it looks like now. I'll undo Control Z. Up, ah, and there's a lot more noise in there. Control Y to redo, and it looks far better. I'm going to go File, Batch Save and Convert, Select Images, Add All, OK. There's uh, my usual settings. The file format should be fits, size format, float, no stretching. Add the suffix underscore cal for calibrated. And now I have to just choose the right place to save it. So these were taken on September 27th, 2015. These are the ring nebula. They're the clear ones. Click on the clear folder. Make a new folder, cal. Hit enter. Move to subfolder backup. If I would overwrite anything, I shouldn't. And click OK. Now it's saving all my files. And if I hit Alt F E, it will close them all. And I can check in here. There should be a new folder called Cal. There it is. And I'll just open one. There it is. I'll hit Control F to take a look. If I scroll down in that window, I can see the history of what was done with it. And there's the dark subtraction with those 10 second darks, and there's the flat field with the C-cal 
flak group listed right there. Great. Close that. At this point, if you think you have a handle on how to calibrate one of these pretty pictures, you can stop watching. Just in case you want to see more, I will do another one. So, you know, I'll probably do the whole thing just real quick. So, blue. These are, again, the ring nebula. Wow, these are dark. So there wasn't much signal in the blue. You see the numbers? They're only about a thousand. If I bring this up to the last brightest pixel that I see here, the maximum is only about 3,000. Let's see if I hit range. It'll do it automatically. Oh, I guess there must be one lone pixel here that's about 3,800. All right, but you can see it's a very dark image, so I don't expect the quality of these to be great even when calibrated. Luckily, because this is a color filter image, this is blue, all we really need this for is color information, how to colorize the detail that was captured in the luminance or clear images. So it's all right that it isn't amazing. Okay, process, set calibration. I don't want to use clear, I want to use blue flats. I'm going to click OK. Oh, and I'll just make sure if I hit Control F, are these still 10 seconds long? Yes, so the same darks that were 10 seconds long, I can use those. Process. Calibrate all. They do look better now, actually. So again, if I go to range, you can see the minimum is now zero, so some of these pixels are actually completely black now, and the maximum is now much lower. Uh, Oh, close to 2,000. If I hit undo, check out how this brightness graph jumps around. So the picture overall was way brighter before it was calibrated. Redo. Now it's way dimmer. But the difference is that a lot of the bright stuff in the background was just that. It was background noise. And if we take a look at it now, I can zoom in. Do, 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 do. See? Ooh! <laughs> the pixels are much uh, more similar to each other now. They are less noisy than they were before. All right, let's get out of that. File, batch save and convert, select images, add all, OK. All these are the same, fits, float, none, cal. It's worth mentioning since I played with how this one was displayed. Because I've said auto stretch, none, the fact that I've played with how this dis is displayed is not going to affect the numbers that are saved uh, when this image is written to a file. So like if I were to put current here instead, then it would actually cut off uh, the pixels that were below the red and the pixels that were above the green and save it that way. We, we don't want to do that. We don't want to lose any information. All right, so path. This is the blue, blue cow. OK and OK. Uh, might as well note that little perform calibration box there. Uh, if you hadn't already calibrated the files, you could check that and then the software would do the same process as process set calibration when you were batch saving and converting the images. I don't like to do that. I like to con uh, to calibrate them first so that I get to see what the result is before they're saved. Why bother saving it if I don't like the results? I, I don't do that. Um, okay. Red next. Drag them in. Same thing. It looks like they're all 10 seconds long, so I'm going to keep the same darks. Go to Process, Set Calibration. Scroll down. I'm no longer doing blue. I'm doing red. So I select the red flat group, and my 10 second darks are still selected. OK. Process, Calibrate All.
Oh, that was fast. I looked away from the screen for a second and it was done. I'll hit undo. Yep, redo. Looks much better now. Undo. Redo. File. Batch save and convert. Select images, add all, OK. Path. The red folder this time. Cal. Enter, enter. And it will save there when I hit OK. Alt F E closes everything. You can see once you get good at this, it gets much faster. And it's faster if I'm not also trying to talk and describe what I'm doing at the same time. I'm dragging in the green fold uh, files of the Ring Nebula now. Process set calibration. Uncheck the red flats, check the green ones. My 10 second darks are still selected. These are still 10 seconds long. And I hit OK and process, calibrate all. All right. Ooh, that's a yucky picture, but it's calibrated. You know, let's look at this one. Undo, redo. Good. File, batch, save, and convert. Select images, add all. OK. Same settings, except for the path. I want the green. And then Alt F E to close everything. I'm going to do exactly the same thing to the M92 pictures, so there's not much point going through the entire thing. But I guess I'll take a look and see if they are maybe a different Exposure time? They are. They're 30 seconds long. So here would be the difference. Um, these are clear files. Ooh, that's a globular cluster. Um, I go to process set calibration. Scroll down. I want my clear flats, but I can't use these 10 second darks. I want 30 second darks, which I probably have. Yeah, you know what? I have them somewhere, but I'll show you anyway. Um, there's the darks folder for this date, 30 seconds. So these are the ones that I want to use. I'm going to add a new dark group. I'll call it 2015. Whoops. 2015-09-26 dark. 30 seconds. All right. I'll just drag these in. Duration, 30 seconds. Temperature, negative 10.3. That matches what we see for these data files in the FITS header window. Just make sure I didn't forget to uncheck something here. All right, all good. OK. These are already very dark, but we'll do process, calibrate all. Very dark compared to the brightness of the object, anyway. You can definitely tell it made a difference if I do Control Z to undo. See, there were all these little bright specks that go away when I hit redo, Control Y. So, file, batch save and convert. They are better. Add all, path. So this is a different object, not the ring nebula. So I choose that object's folder. This is clear. Make a new cal folder. Enter, enter, OK, and that'll save those. So I'm going to do the same thing um, for the red, green, and blue, but it's exactly the same process, so I think that I don't need to show it on this video. All right, next time it will be turning this into a color image in MaximDL.